Light may just be the most important phenomenon in the universe. It transmits information about the physical world around us and has fascinated we humans for thousands of years. But the biggest question about light still remains. What is it really? Mainstream science tells us that it is a photon. Yet if you look at the conventional descriptions, one quickly learns that the definition seems very unclear. The current definition of photon in Wikipedia demonstrates the schizophrenic nature of the photon. Wikipedia defines the photon as a type of elementary particle, the quantum of the electromagnetic field, including electromagnetic radiation such as light, and the force carrier for the electromagnetic force. The first thing to note is the term elementary particle. Wikipedia gives us the following definition. In particle physics, an elementary particle, or fundamental particle, is a subatomic particle with no substructure, thus not composed of other particles. This means that the photon is not comprised of any parts. For many of the science woke, this is not possible. There are no such thing as elementary particles. One of the reasons for this is the necessity of elementary particles to be assigned magical properties in order to organize them. I will come to this later. Safe to say that if you spend time to read Dr. Glenn Borkert's works on infinity, you will most likely come to the conclusion that particles are always made up of parts, or as Borkert says, there are no partless parts. The second part of the mainstream definition of the photon is the quantum of the electromagnetic field. This second part directly and logically clashes with the first definition of an elementary particle. A quantum means a discrete quantity. This requires more than one thing. So we have in the very first sentence of the definition of a photon saying it is indivisible, but it is made up of a discrete quantity of something. It cannot be both. This definition is impossible without any solutions suggested by big science. We have been faced with the infamous wave-particle duality presented by mainstream science for almost 100 years. Yet, there are solutions, and they lie outside of big physics and cosmology. They are found in the science woke, who are proposing real physical models that try to solve the problem of not the photon, but of light. Ether and lattice models give light a physical model, and both do so without the need of a photon. Ether models avoids the problem of the existence of a photon by creating a model that describes light as waves through a medium called ether. The ether particle is not a photon. It is a particle that is similar to the photon in that it is firstly postulated to explain light. But no etherist ever calls their ether particles photons because they know that the photon as described by mainstream science is not an ether particle. This is because mainstream science abandoned ether during Einstein's reign of non-physical terror upon big science. Big science abandoned the concept of ether and moved headlong into the world of light as a photon and a wave, somehow at the same time. Lattice models are slightly different from ether models and whereas ether is like a gas, a lattice model is more like a solid. Ether transmits light like sound traveling through the air. Lattice structures, on the other hand, transmit light much like the sound that travels through a vibrating string between cans. In both these models, light consists of waves in a medium, and the medium cannot be a single particle. Thus, the phenomenon of light cannot be a single particle like a photon. But what really brought me to the subject of the impossibility of the photon was my father's solution for creating light waves using multiple particles. He told me how he came to that conclusion and through that journey we can see why he rejected the idea of a photon. Light has a wavelength and frequency. Frequency is what we see as color. Frequency by definition is the rate at which things, plural, pass through or by a point in space. Frequency, by definition, is more than one particle. No one particle can transmit frequency. This is why science calls light and other electromagnetic phenomenon waves. To say that light is a photon and that it must carry the information of frequency as a single particle simply seems like a bad way to make a physical model for light. 
If there was such a thing as a photon, one photon would have to carry wavelength and frequency. My father's logic when arriving at this solution for the wave-particle duality reasoned that a single particle can have spin and velocity. But given the fact that light travels at the same velocity of c, spin simply couldn't transmit the needed information for a particle we call the photon. At this point, the photon would have to start to resemble the particles in the particle zoo of the standard model. And as Alexander Unsecker appropriately points out, particles in mainstream physics are arbitrary attributes assigned to arbitrary packages of quanta. Our photon could simply carry the attribute frequency without regard to any satisfactory physical manifestation of frequency. This is magic, not physicality. My father was eventually led to a particle model, but unlike ether and lattice theories, light would be made up of moving particles, all at the same speed, traveling in waves. This model, like the other two models, required light to be waves of a plurality of particles, not one particle. In all three models, the particles are not photons, or particles that are exclusively dedicated to light. Ether and lattice models tried to describe gravity using the same particles, making them more general particles than the exclusive photon. In the de Hilster particle model, the same particle that is responsible for light is also responsible for gravity, electrons, electricity, and magnetism, to name a few. The idea of a single purpose particle for light, called the photon, is not only paradoxical in its current definition in mainstream science, it has been wholly abandoned by the critical thinkers who are our science woke outside the mainstream, where new models are more efficient, describe inexplicable phenomena, and provide hope for creating new technologies. Something big physics has been failing at for over 100 years. And before you go and say that big physics has given us countless technologies like the computer and the internet, let's be honest and realize that these technologies are the results of modern engineering based in the real physical world. And it is the engineering spirit that drives science forward, not the theoretical musings of imaginations that come up with paradoxical impossibilities like the photon. This video and companion article can be found on the website sciencewoke.org where you can read about critical thinkers from around the world who are pushing science forward.